Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're gonna to be looking at this pile of parts. Before we do that, a quick word from our sponsors and roll those credits. Right, so what we have got here is roughly 20 parts. Now, each one of these parts, smallest parts, are 50 odd hours. The biggest parts are over 100 hours to print. This has taken a long time. Part of the reason was because I had to move house, so I had to pack up my workshop before I moved. Then when I got to the new house, I had to build a new workshop. So there was a pause in between. Even so, with just the printing alone, this took a long time. You might be able to tell from a couple of the pieces what it is, but this is actually a life-size bust of Gandalf from the Lord of the Rings. Um, if I show you this part here, that will give you a better idea. So he's gonna be actual life size. Now, this file originally was for CG Trader. Looking back, I think the one that I bought was from a guy called Tapsin. Now, the original model is very small. Um, this had to be blown up, and I think it was like, two or three thousand percent it was blown up it was a lot now when it came to cutting this i was having extreme problems when i was cutting it it just wouldn't cut it properly and render the parts and export them no matter what i tried it just would not have it so i spoke to matt from the sanglier he's a friend of ours Spoke to him and he said, send me the file. I'll see if I can cut it up for you. By now, I'd spent about three days trying to do it. He took it and immediately found problems with the model. Not in its original size, but blowing it up, there were problems. Um, it then took him four hours to repair the model and then another hour or two to actually cut it. Now, he cut it into 15 pieces. Um, a few of the pieces were just a bit too large to fit on my printers. The Sidewinder X2 and the longer LK5 just couldn't fit on. So that I split them again, which roughly made it up to sort of about 20 pieces. We then printed the staff um, I just thought for an extra added bit, we'll print the top of the staff. He can have it leaning over his shoulder. So that was added on. So all in all, it's about 20 parts. And when this last part finished, I was so happy because of how long this took. So what we're going to do is we are going to build this now off camera. It's going to take a while. Hopefully it all lines up as it should do. We're going to be using PLA stick, which is right here from Replico. You've seen we've used their products before um, on different models. Well, this PLA stick takes a five, ten minutes to dry, but once it dries, it chemically fuses the parts together. No breakages, no coming apart, no splitting over time. So this is what we're going to be using. Um, so we're going to do that off camera now. And when we come back, hopefully, you will see a Gandalf. But we will see. Cut. Right, so, welcome back. Here's put together. As I said, we used the uh, PLA stick from Replico to put all this together because obviously it's hollow and that gives a chemical bond 
better than the glue we usually use over time with something like this. You can see filled some of the lines, some of the joints where there was just just a little bit, little bit of a gap. You might think that I've changed my t-shirt, but I haven't. Continuity is the uppermost important on this channel. You think I've changed my t-shirt, but I haven't. You just think that. Anyway, so this is just, just a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Now, the reason I think that is because when we printed out a bit of the staff, had another piece on the bottom here, it only came to like here, where it was originally Spence come to like here. I know when this was scaled up, I thought, ah, oh, it's roughly going to be if he was about six foot two, something like that. Um, he may well be six foot two, but he's ginormous. Um, to the point where when I brought it over here, I had to put it on the back seat of my car and every time I looked in my rear view mirror, I could see Gandalf looking at me, which was cool, but also weird. Unfortunately, my car's got tinted windows so nobody else could see that there was a giant Ian McKellen on my back seats. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do next, um, we're going to Repliflow this, um, which is another product, product from Replico. You've seen it on a couple of videos before. You mix it up, you paint it on, and it just takes away any imperfections and hides any sort of gaps or lines and stuff like that. Which, to be fair, this printed really well. There's, there's very few layer lines or anything on this. Um, this was done on my Sidewinder and the longer LK5. Um, now, the reason for this being a week after the first part of this video is because when we were gluing it together, I may or may not have forgot to print one piece of it. I'm not saying I did forget, but there was one piece missing. So that took about six days to print. It was actually one of the back pieces, which was annoying, because it was in the middle, in the back. We couldn't glue the top part onto the bottom part, because that is a going first and what have you. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to repliflow this. We are going to actually spray it because we've just got a compressor and a spray gun. So instead of having to mix it up and paint it on with a brush, and this should go on a lot quicker and a lot finer coat, so you won't lose any form of any details. So what we'll do is we'll cut to that now. And pow! It's been replifoed and it's been primed. Um, you can see on here, there is still some little bits of supports in the beard, which now it's been primed, you can see. Obviously this was all in black filament. Makes it incredibly hard to see when there's little bits of supports. As soon as you put some primer on it, you can see where there's little bits of supports tucked in places. It's not the end of the world, pull them out. Won't take too long. There's still a few little bits of filling I need to do. Um, a couple of little bits on the beard and on these clothes. Um, obviously, I filled some of it before. You see that on the other earlier on. Um, but obviously, once you do prime it, you can then see, again, which ones are still standing out and which ones ain't. So, a little bit of support removal, a little bit of filling, and lots and lots and lots of paint. I actually bought 20 different greys <laughs> for Leo paints for this. Um, how far each bottle is going to go, we'll have to see. I could be uh, buying more of certain, certain shades. I don't know. Um, I'll start off with doing the face or the skin tone. Um, then I'll matte varnish that and put some Vallejo um, liquid mask over the face so that I can then do the rest of the head and not ruin what I've done with the face. Um, 
but yeah, it's jumbo. Um, and what I what I don't have in my workshop is a place for an extra person to permanently sit. Like him. So. I'm seriously worried about where he's going to go. Um, right, so. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to go away now and paint this. It'll be fully painted in another, like a second part to this video. Because I presume this is going to take me a while. It's not small. So, you know. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment of what you think. Where you think I should go with it. What I should try. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.